Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody has had a good week and is looking forward to a fantastic weekend, staying healthy, staying strong. Welcome, Ken. Welcome, Sammy. Welcome, members. This is a members chat class, of course. Everybody is welcome to watch. To become a member, click the join button next to the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. For the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's general IELTS help. Dot com on both of those websites. We have lots and lots of content, videos, practice exams, interactive courses to help you get those high band scores and pass your next IELTS exam. This is our academic IELTS web portal here with the blue background. You can click this big red button to join our premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. It is well worth it. So I highly recommend it. We are an official British Council IELTS Test Registration Center and certified agents. Welcome, Paulo. Uh, General IELTS, same idea, green background. Click this big red button here. You won't regret it. And again, it's a one-time payment and you get access for lifetime or at least until you pass your exam. All right, everyone. So today we are looking at task two writing, how to successfully uh, complete a band nine essay. This is a continuation from yesterday when we did the planning and we established our thesis statement, which will guide our entire essay. Paulo is asking, uh, what are the differences between academic and general IELTS test? Uh, Paulo, the biggest difference between the academic and general IELTS is reading section one and two. In the academic, each of those are one passage. In the general, it's two passage, two short passages each that are a little bit of an easier read. And task one in the writing is very different between the two exams. And of course, the goal of the two exams, Paulo. So academic is used mostly for um, university entrance and admissions, as where the general version is used mostly for emigration, or I should say immigration to uh, certain countries. So those are the biggest differences, but you can learn more about that by visiting our websites as well. If you have questions like Paulo, uh, you can always feel free to uh, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and we will get back to you in short notice. Of course, you can also get our apps, Academic IELTS Help. The app will link to ahelp.com for integrated learning and General IELTS Help app will link to gieltshelp.com. And uh, we just put out a notification that we are looking for some app developers. So if anybody knows a good app developer, send us your resume or CV. You can also send that here to me and we would love to check that out. Um, welcome, June. Welcome, Nick Hill. Good to have more members in the class. So, uh, yeah, today we have this task to essay that we're going to finish with the body paragraphs and the conclusion, and then in about 90 minutes, we will have a speaking part two uh, for everybody, where everybody will be able to join in on the... Uh, chat as well. Hi, Rajveer. Okay. Um, so uh, let's take a look at what we did yesterday. Just a quick overview. Uh, Paulo, we're looking for a permanent position. So we are looking for somebody to be with the company long term. Okay. All right. Um, so here we go. Here's the, here's the question. So IELTS task to writing. Uh, you should spend about 40 minutes on this task. The education of young people is the main priority in many countries around the world. Some people believe that educating adults who cannot read or write 
is essential for society and more funding should be made available for it. Do you agree or disagree? Write at least 250 words. Okay. So uh, yesterday we paraphrased that question to make sure that we understand it, to gather some important vocabulary like illiterate adults, meaning adults who cannot read or cannot write. Uh, the inability to read and write is called illiteracy. The ability to read and write is called literacy, of course. So uh, we identified the topic, public funds for teaching literacy to adults, so giving money from the public, which is good. The controlling idea is, uh, is it a good idea or a bad idea to invest society's money into adult education? And then we did some uh, important critical thinking. Uh, we identified that public funds for this purpose are taxpayer money, donations uh, co collected from charities, creating literacy programs, volunteering time uh, by teachers for those programs. And then we asked a very important question of uh, why should public funds be used for this and we realized that while it's because illiterate adults often do not have money to spend on education, and that will become important for the introduction here. And how can society do this or achieve these programs by hiring teachers, establishing schools and programs such as night classes for adult literacy? Okay. And then I discussed this very important point that you cannot choose both sides. So sometimes students are like, okay, well, I'm going to agree and disagree. Uh, but that is often not the right approach, especially for a high band eight, band nine essay, because in the real world, we are often forced to choose between one or the other. So you can't have it both ways. Okay. And we agreed that uh, public funds are finite, they're limited, uh, so uh, we have to either say, yeah, okay, let's use some money to fund adult literacy, or no, let's use it for something else, and uh, we can't do both, so we have to take one side, and then we have to argue why we believe that side is better, and coming from that idea, we agreed that it is a good return on investment or ROI to invest into adult literacy because it helps the individuals and it also helps society. Andre, thank you for the belated birthday wishes. I appreciate that. That's kind of you. I'm just looking up at the chat and seeing my birthday cake there. Very nice, Andre. Thank you. Okay, so I wrote an introduction uh, for this. I gave this as homework yesterday. Uh, we did finish the thesis. So the thesis was, I completely agree that nations should fund adult literacy programs as these uh, benefit both the individuals and society. Um, so that was a good thesis because we agreed that by being able to read and write, the individual can achieve a higher quality of life and they can contribute to society, uh, which in turn is uh, very good for everyone. Okay, so this was my introductory paragraph and I'm looking for the same from you. Okay, so I'm going to read this, but members at this point in time, please start putting in your hook and your background and your thesis. So for everybody that's watching, a good introductory paragraph has a hook has a background and has a thesis. Um, about a week ago, I interviewed, a we talked about a lot of important points. We're going to have some videos on our channel um, in the next couple of weeks uh, showing these interviews. But just as a foreshadow, we talked about a lot of the big questions that students often ask. And one of these uh, questions is, you know, do we need a hook? Does the introduction in task two for general and academic IELTS tasks to need a hook because a lot of teachers and a lot of people on the internet say, oh, you don't need a hook for uh, task two. Well, this examiner, this former examiner said, yeah, that's not true. Uh, high band essays, they are always looking for a hook. So uh, in standard English essay writing, essays do have a hook. And of course you never need a hook. You don't even need a thesis. 
but you should write a thesis for a good essay, okay? So the goal of the hook, uh, and it's a technical term in writing, okay? This isn't like some imaginary word that somebody made up. This is the technical term in writing, hook. Um, the hook is the first sentence that catches your reader's attention and introduces the topic. It's very important, okay? So, um, Akshay says, hook, high literacy rates of any countries are vital for their economy as well as development. Um, okay, Akshay, it's not bad. You're a little bit off topic. So here, um, you're related, but it's an indirect connection. So you want to be a little bit more direct. Okay, so you're talking about the importance of literacy rates. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not bad, Akshay. It's not bad, okay? I see, I see kind of where you're coming from, especially incorporating that first sentence that educating youth um, is the top priority for many countries, okay? Uh, Rajvir says, uh, growing adults' literacy is a major cause of concern for nations around the globe. Um, I would word that a little bit differently, Rajvir, so it's more sensible. I would word it as illiteracy among adults or illiteracy in adulthood is a major concern. Um, it's I wouldn't say cause of concern. I would just simplify and say concern. So again, Rajvir, remember that your hook should be concise. So Rajvir, I would write yours like this. Okay, I would rewrite it like this to be a little bit more concise and a little bit clearer. So, um, illiteracy in adulthood is of major concern uh, for uh, nations worldwide. Okay, so a bit more concise, a bit clearer. Illiteracy in adulthood is of major concern for nations worldwide. Okay, that's how I would write that one, Rajvir. So always review, revise, and uh, make it more concise and more coherent. That's your goal, okay? Uh, June says, adult illiteracy impedes the development of people and society. Okay, uh, June, that's good. At the same time, I think you're thinking about your thesis and you're kind of overshadowing your thesis a bit too much, okay? So there's a little bit of too much overshadow, but it's not bad, okay? So this is me being hypercritical. Uh, for many of our viewers and members, it's important to know that some of our members like Rajveer and June are band seven and higher with their writing. Um, so I'm kind of pushing them for that band eight and band nine. So when I'm giving Rajveer and June this feedback, I'm basically giving them feedback that will change their writing from a band seven or a band eight to a band nine, okay? So that's the difference between, sometimes, you know, students say, well, what's the difference between a band seven, eight, nine? Um, well, that's the difference. So Rajvir, yours would be like a band seven. The way that I changed it would be like a band nine. Uh, June, uh, yours would be like a band seven, five, and you'd want to give different content to make it band nine so you don't have overshadow with the thesis, okay? All right, uh, Shri says, literacy rate is one of the elements to assess the development of the country. Um, yeah, Shri, so let's reword that as well. The rate of literacy is uh, an assessment for the development of a country, for the level of development in a country. I see where you're going with that, Shri. It's... it's not bad. Again, it's a little bit loosely related, um, but it's not bad. Uh, Ken says, the rate of literacy, literacy rate of the adult, um, okay, adult literacy rates is one of the most crucial concerns around the world. Yeah, so adult literacy rate, okay, like this. It's a bit simpler and a little bit clearer. Adult literacy rate, okay, 
is of um, vital importance for societies around the world. Okay, so uh, what you're trying to say, Ken, basically, in other words, is the number of adults in a country who can read is very important for those countries in the world. And the way to express that is adult literacy rate is of vital importance for societies around the world. Okay, that would be the clearer uh, way to express that. All right. Um, Devonch, uh, Nick Hill, good. Okay. Uh, Sammy, good. Uh, I'll give you more detailed feedback in the next round. All right, we have to keep moving along. Uh, so... Um, I basically uh, created this hook, which um, is kind of uh, synonymous with the importance of the question in the background, but I thought it was fitting for this topic. So many countries still have a significant population of illiterate adults, okay? And that is one way to look at the hook, is why are we asking this question? So what are we targeting with this topic? So here, many countries still have a significant population of illiterate adults. And it's true. So there are still many countries, including the United States, where a lot of adults cannot properly read and write. Okay. And when we mean illiterate adults, it doesn't necessarily mean someone who cannot read or write at all, but it also means somebody who cannot read and write fluently. Okay. Who has a lot of difficulty with fluent reading and writing. Okay, and then uh, the introduction has some background. Background means a definition of key ideas and the importance, okay? So here is my background. The ability of reading and writing is a vital aspect of adult life in order to function well in society. So here, this is coming from the planning that we did yesterday, okay? We talked about this yesterday that, okay, well, why is this important? Because we need to read and write to be able to function in society. Okay. Um, and then we talked about the fact that the reason public funding or public money should be used to help teach adults to read and write is because people who cannot read and cannot write are often also the population that's poor, that doesn't have money for education or uh, even for other uh, sustenance needs like uh, shelter and food. So therefore, illiteracy is often strongly correlated with poverty, right? Okay, and then my um, thesis statement. So my full introduction, short and to the point, looks like this. Many countries still have a significant population of illiterate adults. The ability of reading and writing is a vital aspect of adult life in order to function well in society. Therefore, illiteracy is often strongly correlated with poverty. Consequently, I completely agree that nations should fund adult literacy programs as these benefit both the individuals and society. Okay? So that is definitely targeting this question. It puts forward valid and clear ideas and arguments. Okay. All right. So Rajvir writes, many scholars demand public funding to reduce adult literacy worldwide. Okay. Uh, June writes, for the past decades, we have emphasized education for young people and to some extent overlooked educating illiterate adults who also contribute to a considerable population in most countries. Okay, not bad, June. So June, I like how you're reflecting on that first part of the question as well, the emphasis on educating youth and overlooking uh, educating adults who are illiterate. Okay, it's good. Yeah, I definitely thought about combining that somewhere in my essay. I feel like I'm going to leave that more for the conclusion, um, but uh, yeah, you could do it in the introduction as well. So I'm going to save that a little bit for the conclusion, but you could do it in the introduction as you just did, okay? Andre, uh, your hook is okay. Again, we got to keep moving here 
so that we can progress through the whole essay. All right, um, so now we're ready to go into uh, body paragraph one. Before I do that, any questions about my introduction? So before I start to go into uh, body paragraph one composition, which has a topic sentence plus explanation plus example plus a connection. Uh, any questions about my introduction here? Okay, so I'll read it one more time. Many countries still have a significant population of illiterate adults. The ability of reading and writing is a vital aspect of adult life in order to function well in society. Therefore, illiteracy is often strongly correlated with poverty. Consequently, I completely agree that nations should fund uh, literacy programs as these benefit both the individual and society. Okay, any questions? Uh, Deepika, the thesis statement is the last sentence. This one, consequently, I completely agree that nations, okay, the question is asking, do you agree or disagree that uh, governments should fund uh, these adult literacy programs? So this is my thesis statement. The thesis statement is the argument which gives reasons for my argument. So the reasons are to benefit the individual and to benefit society. And Depika, it's almost always that your thesis statement is the last one or last one or two sentences of your introduction, okay? All right. So if anybody else has a question about the introduction, ask away. I'm going to um, <clears throat> uh, get into the body paragraph one here. Uh, Depika is asking, where are we going to place our paraphrase? Uh, you mean the paraphrase of the question? Um, I don't feel that I need it in this case for my introduction. I might use it in my conclusion this time. So uh, I'm going to use that paraphrase of the introduction more in my conclusion. You'll see that at the end of the essay, Depika. So uh, this is why I always tell students, paraphrasing the question isn't necessarily your introduction, okay? Sometimes it can be, sometimes parts of it can be used in the body paragraph, sometimes uh, it's going to be in the conclusion, as in this case, okay? Uh, paraphrasing the question does not necessarily answer the question, so be careful with that, okay? Uh, Rajveer, yeah, why is Microsoft Word <laughs> uh, showing... Um, uh, grammar check and error. I'm not sure. Let me right click on that. Uh, I was a little bit curious. I don't see the mistake myself. Um, yeah, so grammar checks aren't always perfect. Um, so the problem with grammar check here, um, uh, Rajveer, is that uh, grammar check is identifying adult literacy as a singular noun. So it's telling me that this should be as this benefit, both the individual and society. But that's actually a mistake because the noun is programs. So it is a plural and these benefit both. So grammar checks aren't always perfect. Using Microsoft Word grammar or using Grammarly, uh, they're great tools and they do have a very high rate of accuracy. I would say about 95% when you get into higher level of writing. So when you become a band eight, band nine level writer in the English language, uh, you will discover that these grammar check programs aren't always correct. Okay. In this case, definitely not correct because adult literacy programs as these programs benefit both the individual and society. Okay. Uh, Sal, if the screen is a bit blurry, um, change your resolution in your YouTube settings to 720p. Okay, 720p. Okay. All right.
Uh, no, Rajvir, it wouldn't make sense to, because uh, fund is the verb here. Okay. So, no. Okay. It's, it's correct. So I, I've read it three, four times. I'm sure it's correct. I completely agree that nations should fund adult literacy programs as these benefit both the individual and society. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, the action benefits. I see what you're saying, uh, Rajveer, with the fund. So funding, uh, it benefits both the individual and society, but I'd rather modify programs here. So, yeah. Okay, good question, Rajveer. Great question. Okay. All right, so uh, let's go to the body paragraph. So body paragraph, uh, we need a topic sentence. Uh, the topic sentence is going to be about literacy programs benefiting the individual. So here we need a deeper definition. Of uh, literacy. Or investing in literacy. benefiting the individual okay so that's what we want to uh, define or clarify uh, further for our reader in our topic sentence all right so our first thesis point is that literacy programs uh, benefit the individual and now we need to uh, express that in a clear way in a sentence so we basically paraphrase it what do we mean by that okay so what does that mean all right um, so I'm gonna do that you do the same and then we we will compare okay All right, I'm going to go with that. All right, Rajveer says, uh, public funds for adult literacy schemes empower impoverished adults with better job opportunities and improves their life quality. Okay, Rajveer, yeah, that works. That's fine. Uh, Sammy says, adults are benefited through um, literacy when authorities provide financial assistance uh, for their education. Yeah, Sammy, that's some nice paraphrasing. I like that as well. Okay, uh, this is what I said here. Spending taxpayer money on educating adults to read and write leads to an improved quality of life and self-esteem. And I'm going to uh, parallel my grammar here. So leads to an improved life quality and self-esteem. Okay. Uh, June writes, funding adult schooling that educates adults how to read and write. Who? that's a bit wordy, June. So uh, funding adult schooling to uh, teach reading and writing plays a vital role in helping illiterates develop themselves and thus lead a better life 
Okay, yeah, June, good ideas, careful with wordiness. Uh, Shri writes, the taxpayer, one word, taxpayer, uh, the taxpayer spending on education offers better life in society and opens gates to a handful of opportunities in a competitive world. Uh, in a competitive world. It's not the competitive world. Taxpayers, Shri is one word. And Shri, very importantly, don't use the word will offer. Just simply keep it present tense. Offers. Make it a general truth, okay? So students, really try to avoid using will in your essay, all right? Uh, most academic essays do not use the future participle will. Okay, it's avoided. All right, we want to make it a general truth. Depika says, education lifts a person's socioeconomic status and therefore supports as a backbone to make a living. Depika, nice. It's a nice uh, place to use the word uh, socioeconomic status. So um, <clears throat> literacy improves a person's socioeconomic status and therefore um, leads to a better quality of life. That's another really nice. So here's an alternate kind of topic sentence that I really like uh, from Depika. So um, <clears throat> uh, teaching, I'm going to change it a little bit, Depika, but teaching uh, adults to read and write improves their socio economic uh, status and leads to a higher uh, quality of life. Yeah, that would be a really good uh, topic sentence as well. Topic sentences also kind of like a hook uh, should be kept relatively short, okay, and very, very clear. So it's a good idea to have a topic sentence that's not overly wordy and confusing. So you want to keep it short, not as short as the hook. So maybe not eight to 10 words, but 16, 18 words, but still relatively short and to the point. Okay. All right. So now we want to explain that. Okay. So what do you mean by that? So what do you mean that uh, it leads to higher socioeconomic status and a better quality of life? So what do you mean spending taxpayer money on educating Adults to read and write improves quality of life and self-esteem. So this is where you get into how does that happen, right? So Okay, 
So there, a little bit of explanation on what it means to be literate, why that leads to improved uh, life quality and self-esteem. Most jobs in the world require employees to communicate by reading and writing. Without these skills, it is virtually impossible to make ends meet. It means make enough money to be self-reliant. Uh, literate adults can earn money by gaining employment, and this also improves their self-worth as they're able to be independent. Um, and I can simplify that. Okay, so always reviewing and revising as uh, they can be. Okay, much simpler. As they can be independent and afford not only their sustenance needs, but also have money for entertainment and travel. Okay. All right, uh, let's see what some of our members have, okay? Um, June writes, in modern society, most occupations require basic reading and writing skills. Many higher paid jobs, such as doctors, lawyers, and engineers, need such abilities at a high level. As a result, the majority of illiterate adults tend to work at the lowest pay or cannot find a job in today's competitive market. Yeah, very good, June. Yeah, so you're quite synonymous with what I'm writing there as well. Uh, Rajveer writes, when adults acquire basic reading and writing skills, they can upgrade their jobs from um, menial labor to sophisticated ones, which require... Uh, reading uh, manuals and security standards such as machine operation in a factory. This enables them to earn twice or thrice the remun remunerations that they can, uh, that they were getting earlier, and this money can be spent on paying tuition fees for higher education. Okay, Rajvir, yeah, good. You have a lot of ideas in there. I would probably simplify that a little bit. Uh, Naveen, welcome to our group of members. Sammy writes, in most countries, adults do not show any interest for getting educated due to economic crisis, so they live compromised lives. When governments allocate funds like providing study materials and arranging teachers, individuals can have a quality of life in society. Um, yeah, I see what you're saying, Sammy, but I think it's a little bit um, off topic, it's a little bit indirect, like the desire to learn needs to be assisted by giving government funds as well. Um, okay, Devanch says the person himself enhances his career with required communication skills in the job, which makes them capable to achieve any task in the organization. This makes them self-dependent and helps them earn a better amount of money. Okay, Devanch, uh, again, not bad, a little bit indirect. So be more direct, students, be more direct. Uh, let's uh, see that with the example here, okay? So um, here's the example. Okay. Um, so
All right. Uh, so here's a very specific example. Always keep your examples extremely specific. So after learning to read and write, a person can move from unemployment into a secretarial position where they can earn $2,000 per month, which pays for food, shelter, and clothing, as well as an annual trip to Hawaii. Clearly, this is an overall improvement in socioeconomic status and living quality. Okay. Let's keep that life quality. Okay. So always reviewing and revising. All right. Uh, I want to see how many words this body paragraph is. So this body paragraph is 127 words. All right. So it's quite a bit. Um, and that's totally okay. All right. So again, um, just reflecting back on that interview that I had with the uh, former IELTS examiner, we talked about the word limits and we talked about the minimum 250 word limit uh, in the uh, task two of IELTS exam. And I asked him, I said, you know, like how often is it that an essay which has around 250 words gets a band or a ba band nine score? And he said, very, very rarely. He said, most essays that will get a band eight or a band nine for task two tend to be closer to 300, 350 words. That's because it's very difficult to clearly express ideas in a coherent, detailed way in just 250 words. So even though the task says minimum 250 words, you should be thinking closer to 300, 350 words, which means that if you have about 120, 140 words in a body paragraph, it is absolutely okay. All right. Keep that in mind. That's an important tip as well. All right. Okay, Nick Hill writes, after mastering the skills of writing and reading to communicate, an individual can get a high paying job uh, around two to three thousand dollars, which in turn leads to a better lifestyle. Uh, Nick Hill, I like it. I like that explanation. It's clear. It's quantitative. It's good. And then I'm sure you can flow nicely into an example of exactly what you're saying. So that's very, very good. You want to be direct like that. Okay. Andre writes, when a person has a high education, they have more opportunities to pursue their dreams and self-actualize. Uh, very good, Andre. I would say to and self-actualize. Don't really use the exclamation mark, Andre. So we don't want to shout at our readers, generally speaking. Um, and a word that you want to remember there is self-actualize. Okay. So self-actualize means to realize your dreams, like to do what you really want to do. Okay. Uh, self-actualize. It means to realize one's uh, dreams and ambitions in life. Okay. All right. Okay, so now uh, when you're finished a body paragraph, read the whole paragraph, make sure it makes sense, remove any redundancies, so repetition of ideas, remove redundancies in words, try to paraphrase them with other words, uh, synonyms. I'm going to read this, see if I can improve it a little bit. So spending taxpayer money on educating adults to read and write leads to an improved life quality and self-esteem. Most jobs in the world require employees to communicate by reading and writing. Without these skills, it is virtually impossible to make ends meet. Literate adults can earn money by gaining employment, and this also improves their self-worth as uh, self-worth as can be independent. Okay, that doesn't make sense, so I have to fix that. So this was a fix that actually broke the sentence. So literate adults can earn money by gaining employment, and this also improves their self-worth uh, through independence.
and uh, they can afford not only their sustenance needs, but also have money for entertainment and travel. After learning to read and write, a person can move from unemployment into a secretarial position where they can earn $2,000 per month, which pays for food, shelter, and clothing, as well as an annual trip to Hawaii. Clearly, this is an overall improvement in uh, socioeconomic status and life quality. I find that my connecting sentence here um, is a little bit uh, redundant. So I'm going to change that. This is one of two reasons that I believe um, why I support using government funds uh, for educating not not only youth but also adults all right uh, so here i'm reflecting back on the original question and i feel like this is a good spot to kind of incorporate some of that uh, first part of the sentence the uh, countries focus largely on educating youth. So this is one of two reasons why I support using government funds for further educating not only youth but also adults. Now I'm a little bit happier with this body paragraph in the sense that it's more concise, there's less redundancy, fewer mistakes, and it is directly relating to the entire question that we are dealing with, okay? So that's the goal. So at that band eight, band nine level, you're making not only corrections to your language, like vocabulary and grammar, but you're also continuously making improvements to content as well, okay? All right, uh, June, I see that you're using a personal example, which is good, that works, all right? Uh, Ken writes, after graduating, he found a job as a scientist that developed technology to create a robot to improve the lives of millions of people. Okay, Ken, I'm guessing there's a beginning part to that. Okay, Ken writes, not only the person knows how to read and write, but also that person can start a business to improve his or her life as well as that of the community. Um, Ken, be careful not to accidentally mix up body paragraph one and body paragraph two. Um, so improving society, that's for body paragraph two. So don't mix it together yet, okay? Only mix it in the conclusion um, and keep the content separate for body one, body two, okay? All right, um, Depika writes, my friend's mother was illiterate and uh, was doing menial jobs to pay b her bills. She went to school in her 30s and now she owns her own business and earns around $3,000 per month. She is much happier and she takes her family on annual vacations to Goa, okay? Uh, so, Depika, good. A um, little bit more on the example to show that improvement in life quality. Okay? But good. Good writing. All right? All right. Andre says, thousands of students take the IELTS every year to pursue self-actualization. Absolutely, Andre. And uh, IELTS requires reading and writing skills in English, right? So you could incorporate that as an example in a clever way. All right. Okay, so now we go on to body paragraph two. Okay. And body paragraph two is going to have the same structure. So you're going to have a topic sentence. 
Okay, you're going to have uh, an explanation and an example. Uh, you don't really need the connecting or concluding sentence because you have a conclusion coming up after body paragraph two. Uh, and this one, of course, is going to discuss the ROI for society when investing into adult literacy. Okay, so that's going to be the focus of your topic sentence. So the return on investment for society when society takes some of its budget and puts it towards adult literacy. Okay, so that's what's going on here. Now, um, unfortunately, I'm running out of time and I don't want to rush through this body paragraph, but I think you have uh, a clear idea, members. And we do have a Q&A uh, class coming up tomorrow, a question and answer session. So I'm going to finish this essay after this class and then we can briefly touch on it um, or at least go over it in the uh, Q at the beginning of the Q&A session uh, tomorrow. So what I encourage you to do is finish this essay uh, today and then uh, it'll be a great opportunity if you have some questions to ask me those questions for our question and answer session tomorrow. Does that make sense? Everybody's on board? Yeah? Okay. So uh, finish the essay, finish the body, finish body paragraph two, finish conclusion. Think about your questions. Ask those questions from me tomorrow in the Q&A session. Okay. All right. I can see everybody saying sounds good. Uh, thank you. Great job. All right, everyone. Thank you. And remember coming up in about 30 minutes, uh, I will host another class where everybody will be able to join the chat and that will be a uh, speaking part two. So we're going to look at a speaking part two uh, cue card question. And again, for all of our viewers, please do visit us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS lessons and materials, practice exams and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Uh, the websites should look like this. And you can hit those big red buttons to uh, join our premium packages, one-time payment uh, for lifetime access. I'm Adrian, and I will be back in 30 minutes with Cue Card Speaking Part 2, a step-by-step -step guide. For now, I'm signing out, and hopefully I'll see you shortly. Bye.